In this video, I'm going to talk about the differences between homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures, but I'm just going to start by defining mixtures from the perspective of a chemist. Now, everybody knows what a mixture is, but we're going to give it a scientific definition. So a mixture is something that has at least two substances present, so we're going to define it as having two or more substances. And those substances in our mixture, they are combined in a non-fixed ratio. So what exactly does that mean? I feel like the best example for illustrating this non-fixed ratio concept would be, let's say we're gonna use trail mix as our example. There is more than one way to make trail mix. Maybe you make it with one cup of peanuts and one cup of raisins and one cup of M&Ms. And that's your personal recipe for trail mix. Um, but, you know, maybe I don't like raisins as much as you, so I'm going to use, instead of one cup of raisins, I'm going to use a half a cup of raisins, and that's okay. This is what we mean by a non-fixed ratio. There are many, many different ways to combine peanuts, raisins, and M&Ms to make trail mix. Uh, maybe I want to have a whole lot of M&Ms in there. Maybe I want five cups of M&Ms in my trail mix. So the point is that just simply combining these ingredients together is all that it takes to make a mixture. The ingredients don't need to be combined in a specific amount. It might not be very good trail mix, but it still will be trail mix, um, no matter what the ratio of ingredients might be. The last characteristic of a mixture is that the substances, when they are combined, retain their identity. And so this simply means that when we make our trail mix, the peanuts are still peanuts, and the raisins are still raisins, and the M&Ms are still M&Ms. When you combine these th three things together, the M&Ms don't turn into marshmallows, and the peanuts don't turn into eggs. They retain their original identity. They are not transformed into some new substance. So when we combine these substances together to make a mixture, the mixture that results can either be classified as homogeneous or heterogeneous. Let's just start off by taking a look at the prefixes homo versus hetero because that's going to help us understand these two different types of mixtures. Prefix homo means same and the prefix hetero means different. The word homogeneous and heterogeneous when it's applied to a mixture is describing the way the mixture appears when we look at it, and this is just talking about it, looking at it with our eyes, not using any kind of special scientific equipment, just looking at it with our eyes in the mixture, in a homogeneous mixture, the mixture has one um, uniform appearance. And we can work that prefix homo, for homogeneous, we can work that in into our definition. We can say that all of the components of the mixture look the same. So before I give you an example of that, let's go ahead and define heterogeneous. A heterogeneous mixture has a non-uniform appearance in the mixture, in a heterogeneous mixture, the components don't all look the same. That's kind of hard definition. So we, we're going to instead say that the components can be visually identified meaning that you can actually see them with your eyes because they look different from each other. So let's go on to some examples. With a homogeneous mixture, the components don't need to look the same prior to the mixing. So let's use salt water as our example for a homogeneous mixture. 
And so let's say you take a, a glass and you fill it up with some water, which we're gonna make my water blue. And then you have a little container of salt. So I'm gonna make my salt crystals black, which we know that they're white, but these are my salt crystals. So when you have water and you have salt separately, you can definitely see that the salt and the water, they don't look the same. They look different from each other. But when you put the salt into the water, so when the salt goes down into the water, as you know, that salt dissolves. It goes into the water and it's dissolving in that water. But as it dissolves, you can't see it anymore. So when you look at the salt water, you don't see the individual salt particles in there. Now, this is, you know, under the assumption that you haven't added a ton of salt. If you add too much salt, then this whole conversation gets thrown out the window. So you've just added a small amount of salt and it's just kind of hiding inside the water and you can't actually see the salt chunks anymore. The mixture has a uniform appearance. It just appears to be water and all of the components have the same visual appearance. For a heterogeneous mixture, let's just stick with our trail mix example. When you combine those three components, we'll combine our trail mix components in a glass. Um, and so we're going to put some peanuts in there. There's my peanuts. And we're going to put some raisins in there. We'll make those purple. There's our raisins. And then we'll put some M&Ms in there as well. So when we look at this glass of trail mix, it has a non-uniform appearance, meaning that it doesn't just look like one single thing. You can see the individual components. Each component can be visually identified. You can find the M&Ms and you can pick them out and eat them first. And you can find the raisins and you can pick them out and throw them away because they're gross. This is the difference between a homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture. It simply has to do with the way that it appears when you look at it with your eyes.